Welcome to Politics and Right. My name is Egberto Willis, your host. Good morning, Houston. Good morning, Houston. We are going to have a great show for you today. But in fact, you are going to determine what we speak about because, you know, the big story is out. The big story is out. But as soon as I get in with the control room and have our word of the day and et cetera, et cetera, then we'll get started. Good morning, Howard. Good morning, Jack. How are my best peeps doing in the control room? Well, good morning, Egberto. We're doing pretty well. The 10 cans and string have once again held up. And to Harry this morning, uh, I wanted to tell him what that jazz song was. That's called Black River by Keiko Matsui. And you can tell it's Keiko Matsui by the piano. because She was a piano player. And we have our wisdom from Jack this morning. Well, what's what's going on? Good morning, Egberto. Buenos dias, Jack. Uh, okay, the... The thing that was sent to me by my friend Brett this morning was to be beautiful means to be yourself. You don't need to be accepted by others. You need to accept yourself. That means wow. I don't have to wear makeup anymore? <laughs> well, not for you. No. I know. I know there was a reason why well, you were so handsome. Makeup on your face in the morning. How? <laughs> you know? <Jeez. laughs> hey, that's why he's so handsome, Jack. We didn't know he wore makeup, uh, Jack. We didn't know that, did we? A little eyeliner. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's very handsome, Jack, here, you know? Yeah, well, I, right. you know, we, enough of this you, nonsense. You got a good show for us? What yeah, we more? got a man. We got a great show. We got a great show. But you know, people are going to determine also uh, how long we spend on a particular subject here. So let's go ahead and get busy. Title of the show: Esta mañana says Jack Smith indicts Trump. Topic number one. Topic number two: Is he the Southern Democratic template? I interviewed a a cool young man from Missouri who's running for the attorney general and progressive analysis from a guy out of Seattle who runs uh, the NPI. So anyhow, special counsel Jack Smith exposes a corrupt Trump with a powerful indictment. Elad Gross template could be a progressive roadmap. Andrew Villanueva discusses how progress is, how progressives should fight. Anyhow, folks, how are you doing this morning? Telephone number. And you can call in right now if you want to talk about the Trump thing uh, to start the program out. 713-526-5738. Una vez más, 713-526-5738. Si quieres lo en español, 713-526-5738. Y podemos tomar las, la, las preguntas también en español. Anyhow, folks, 713-526-5738. Remember, you can get this show by simply going to 90.1 FM on the dial. If you're not there already, you can also download the TuneIn app from the Android or Apple Store and search for KPFT. And guess what? You'd be listening to us on KPFT Stream, and you can stream from directly or from our website. That is kpft.org. And while you're there, if you are so inclined, you can say, you know what? These guys are doing great work for the society, great work for the community. We also want to provide some sort of a sustenance to this wonderful radio station that only caters to us. Likewise, you can reach us on Facebook and not reach us, but watch us on Facebook. How do you do that? Facebook.com slash KPFT Houston. Facebook.com slash KPFT Houston. And lastly but not least, you can watch us on YouTube by going to politicsdoneright.tv. One more time, politicsdoneright.tv. And you can get directly to our channel. Remember again, 713-526-5738. Hit extension number two, and you'll come directly online. 713-526-5738. Empuja la extensión número dos. Y puedes conseguir estar en, la, en el aire inmediatamente. Anyway, folks, kpft at politicsdoneright.com. If you want to send me an email, again, I repeat, kpft at politicsdoneright.com. You have a complaint, something you like, something you don't like, something you want me to cover, whatever the case may be, this is your station and our ears, our, our, all our stuff belongs to you. Anyway, folks, I'm going to start the program with El Señor Jack Smith, 
Uh, this is what Jack Smith had to say about uh, the indictment yesterday. Well, it has happened. The former president of the United States, Donald Trump, the criminal in chief, has finally been indicted for attempting to overthrow the United States of America. Check this out. Good evening. Today, an indictment was unsealed, charging Donald J. Trump with conspiring to defraud the United States, conspiring to disenfranchise voters, and conspiring and attempting to obstruct an official proceeding. The indictment was issued by a grand jury of citizens here in the District of Columbia, and it sets forth the crimes charged in detail. I encourage everyone to read it in full. The attack on our nation's capital on January 6th, 2021, was an unprecedented assault on the seat of American democracy. As described in the indictment, it was fueled by lies. Lies by the defendant targeted at obstructing a bedrock function of the U.S. government, the nation's process of collecting, counting, and certifying the results of the presidential election. The men and women of law enforcement who defended the U.S. Capitol on January 6th are heroes. They are patriots and they are the very best of us. They did not just defend a building or the people sheltering in it. They put their lives in the line to defend who we are as a country and as a people. They defended the very institutions and principles that define the United States. Since the attack on our Capitol, the Department of Justice has remained committed to ensuring accountability for those criminally responsible for what happened that day. This case is brought consistent with that commitment, and our investigation of other individuals continues. In this case, my office will seek a speedy trial so that our evidence can be tested in court and judged by a jury of citizens. In the meantime, I must emphasize that the indictment is only an allegation and that the defendant must be presumed innocent until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt in a court of law. I would like to thank the members of the Federal Bureau of Investigation who are working on this investigation with my office, as well as the many career prosecutors and law enforcement agents from around the country who have worked on previous January 6th investigations. These women and men are public servants of the very highest order, and it is a privilege to work alongside them. Thank you. Now let me in as in as much as oh I didn't play the whole thing but you know that that's okay. Uh, here's the deal. In as much as this uh, criminal has been indicted, you know, and and and, uh, and many are complaining about you know whether it's fair or not and all of that sort of stuff. Had Donald Trump been somebody else, he would have been locked up in jail long time ago. It's not like this guy has just learned criminality. This guy just brought to the United States presidency something that he has gotten away with over and over again. Good morning, Melanie Keelan from Barcelona, Spain. Good morning, Dilbert Doe, uh, who says, lock him up, lock him up. Yeah, he was the one singing lock him up. It's ironic because all the things that he said during Hillary Clinton, he falsely claimed that uh, she did something. And by the way, let me just be frank. I'm not a Hillary Clinton fan, but I'm a fan of of fairness. I'm a fan of good judgment, et cetera. And, uh, you know, when, when she had the, the thing about having an email server in her basement and, and, and the FBI was supposed to be looking over this information, he said several things. One of the things he kept on saying is lock her up. I want to hear folks talk about lock him up now. But the ironic thing about it is one of the things that he said was disqualifying for her was that the, the investigation was likely to continue during her presidency, and no one should be elected president if they are in the process, of, if they are being investigated or run the risk of indictment, etc. That was out of his mouth. Well, he has over 70 counts right now and counting. I think it's 70 counts. I think it's 
20 something from New York, 40 something from, I mean, it's a bunch of counts right now. And of course, the four most dangerous counts are the ones where he attempted to overthrow the United States government. And I, I tell you, uh, there should be no doubt that this guy doesn't belong in the White House. He didn't belong in the White House given his criminality before. And uh, the, the thing that I think as a country we must ask is how could we possibly, how could we possibly have been sufficiently gullible to elect a person? I know what folks are going to say about Hillary and Obama and Biden and, and all these other folks, right? Uh, that, you know, none of these folks work. There, there's much that they're going to say about these people, but how do you, it, how do you consider the leader of your party, the leader of your country, a guy like Donald Trump, who all the negative things that we knew didn't start there. It tells you something about where we have sunk into as a country. You know, um, I, I gave a, a talk at the Universal Unitarian Church, and I was just, the, the guy who uh, just put it out uh, on, on, on YouTube last night, and I listened to a part of it, and, and a part of it is where I was talking about, um, you know, the, how folks who immigrated to this country, myself, and, and, and you heard another caller from Panama yesterday, and you hear, uh, you know, I, I hang with quite a few immigrants. And the years that we got to this country, uh, you know, during, just before Reagan, uh, and, and you thought about this country as that bastion that because we know it had its faults, we know it, it was created out of a greater sin, but we always saw it as the country moving forward, and it was the country moving forward. That's who America has always been, a country moving forward. A country, I mean, again, there's no country with an with a innocent history, right? No country that I know of has an innocent history. But one of the bastions of America was in, it, even in its flawed constitution, it allowed, it, allowed for, it allowed for it to improve. It started from its inception with an improvement called the Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights was nothing but a nothing but a uh, 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 the, the Ten First Amendments to the Constitution. And thanks for that thumbs up, Melanie Keelan. And those that are listening, yeah, listen to Melanie Keelan. Give us some thumbs up and some likes, etc. Make sure that we go out there widely. But yeah, so one thing about this country, this country uh, started with Ten Amendments, right? Not started, but you know, during to get to get the Constitution ratified. It had to have those Ten Amendments that gave us our Bill of Rights. It, 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 it proved that the original Constitution as written needed some help in the beginning and that it could have been done, the elastic clause in the Constitution. And since then, we've added so many other amendments, right? And to make it better, to make it better. And that's where we were going. But then came Ronald Reagan. Then came Ronald Reagan. Many, the heroes of many bodies. In, in fact, I came to the United States during the reign of Ronald Reagan, the ending years of Carter, the last year of Carter, the beginning year of Reagan. And Reagan was a good actor. I mean, I kind of like Reagan in the beginning, right? Until I learned true America, living in America. Welcome aboard, Alistair Waters, Melon Keelan, Dilter Doe. Until I learned exactly what was happening, right? But it has been, even though many people have yet to understand it, it has been downhill since, since Ronald Reagan. Downhill since Ronald Reagan, and there are specific reasons why. 713, before I move on to this subject, I have a lot more to say about us as a country. 713-526-5738. Extension number two, would you like to have your two cents, your word? Whether, and by the way, please, call in. You don't have to agree with me. And you still get the same amount of respect, whether you agree with me or not. This is your station. Your voice must be heard. 
whatever it is you have to say. 713-526-5738. But reiterating, coming to this country, most of us revered what this country represented. And yes, we wanted to come to this country. I remember uh, when I started complaining about Reagan, somebody said, well, if you don't like it, go home. And I said, no, if you don't like it, you make a change. And he said, well, who the hell are you to want to make a change? You are an import anyway. And I said, and what are you? You know, now if a native comes and tells me, uh, well, you know, uh, you, you want to hear a story, Egberto? Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll give it some thought. But again, how we, have we degenerated? And when I, when I talk about Reagan starting it, I'm talking about the degeneration, the, 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 the movement to, and I, I want to be kind in the way I say it, but I'm not talking about the, uh, the, uh, the obnoxious word, way of meaning for stupidity. I'm talking about the actual meaning of stupidity. It was almost a, a, a <laughs> after the Powell memo was written, that document that was designed to make us less smart. The, the person who best instituted and implemented the Powell memo was Ronald Reagan. And that is to pass every type of policy to make us less intelligent as a country. Pass every kind of policy to make us accept uh, the status, not even the status quo, the degeneration of the status quo. And what is the degeneration of the status quo? Everything on, since Reagan was paying less for education, giving, uh, providing less services to people as best you can. Remind having all productivity ascend to the top. Work the American people harder for less pay in real dollars. Export their jobs to make products cheaper as the plutocracy profited from it. That is what supply side economics did to us. And in the process of doing that to us, it made us less smart by science. We have to make Americans less smart because which Americans are going to keep voting the people in that do them the most harm? Which Americans have the aptitude to do that? And it's an uneducated American. That is what causes the election of people who serve us the least. And that is the design of the Powell Memo by Lewis Powell, who then became the Supreme Court Justice of the United States. People, uh, I hope, I hope with the indictment of Donald Trump, that not only uh, people start to wake up on Donald Trump proper, but that people start to wake up on what has happened to this country. The country that we all love. I don't, I don't doubt Donald Trump's voters, which includes some of my own family, loves this country. I have no doubt about that. But we have to do something about our intrinsic gullibility. Because our gullibility continue to have us elect people based on platitudes, based on fallacies, to rule this country. And in the process, the country is destroyed. In the process, we continue to lose ground to the rest of the world. So what are we now? We are a country with the, the strongest, the biggest, the best army on the planet. The one that can blow everything up. But in the process, does very little going forward. You know, um, uh, in Panama right now, uh, there are, there are, um, they're talking about the amount of investments that China is doing, not only in Panama, but Costa Rica, Nicaragua, Jamaica, Colombia, Brazil, all of that, right? We have just about ceased support for Latin America. We have ceased having influence, positive influence, goodwill across the world because we elect charlatanes to our to, to run our country, not understanding that China is building people without guns, bombs, and ammunition. They're building up with goodwill. Not that they're doing it for benevolent reasons, 
But you know what? Bellies are full, streets are built, infrastructure is constructed. And you know what we have been doing? Blowing stuff up and not necessarily repairing it after we blow it up. Because we have the big, baddest army and nobody dare touch us. Hell, we can stay from North Carolina and control drones that are destroying stuff in Iraq. We can stay from North Carolina and fly things all over the world and blow stuff up. You know? So anyway, I, 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 you may want to ask, how does this all have to do with Donald Trump? Well, yesterday the polls came out. 43-43 is the polls. Donald Trump is tied with Joe Biden. I don't know if that's a bad thing on Biden or a bad thing on, 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 on Trump. But think about that. Think about the 43% of people that are likely to vote for Donald Trump. Yes, it's not a majority, but it's a lot. And you have to ask, who are those people? And I'm, I don't say that out of being rude. I would love some of you to call me right now. Who are those people? Who are those people that only see the words and not know the deeds or see what's behind the words? Who are those people? Would one of you call 713-526-5738? Would love to hear from you. I would love you to put me in my place. What am I getting wrong? Who are those people? 713-526-5738. You know, I, as, I, as I speak about this, as I, as I think about it, it it's, as, I, as I think about my immigrant beginnings, as I think about choosing America as to the place where I really wanted to live because it had the greatest potential in this hemisphere. And then you sit back and you, and you, watch, and you watch the progressive degradation of our political IQ. What do we do? Well, we have KPFT 90.1 FM, and we have a lot of progressives out there trying like hell to do the work, trying like hell to provide that positive affirmation, that, that enlightenment, to hope. Not hope, I don't believe in hope. To, to trend us into moving where we need to be. Trend us into saying we can't allow we cannot allow the continual degradation of the country by those who really don't care or those who are willfully ignorant because of many other externalities. Anyhow, 713-526-5738. Uh, I would love to hear from you all. 713, I see some phones ringing. As soon as the first one is cleared, I'll get you on air. 713. 526-5738. This is your phone. This is your call. Let us hear from you. Let's go ahead and hear from Hector. Hector, come on in, my friend. Hector, come on in your hat. Hey, good morning, sir. How are you? I am fine, sir. Talk to me. Okay, thank you for taking my call. I was listening to your program, and just let me start by saying that I... Uh oh, uh, uh, Hector, we we accidentally oh. lost you, Hector. Please give us a call back. Uh, that was just an accidental drop. Give me a call back, Hector. Yeah, we'll get him. We'll get him back here, Egberto. I yes. just had some thoughts here. Well, yeah, that's fine. That it happens, back. man. It happens. Anyway, folks. So we're go we're gonna wait for Hector to call back, and then uh, we'll we'll pick, we'll continue there. And anybody who has been calling, please g feel free give us a call. This is your station. Anyhow, uh, let's, let's see what we have here for a second. Um, but folks, it is important. It is important. Go ahead, uh, Howard. Oh, I just had some thoughts on which, what, why Donald Trump is so popular. Why yes, people please. can't see this. And it's the American dream that he promises but never delivers. Just like he's a, he's a con man. And... You have to be likable as a con man or the con doesn't work. He promises everything to the world. He promises everything to the middle income folks who have been disenfranchised by the economy and lower income folks too. And, but he doesn't deliver. That's the problem. You know, if, if you, if you promise something, you've got to deliver it. 
Otherwise, you're a con man. And this man is a con man. And you and know, he's, good. he's always been a con man. Uh, beforehand, let me just say, Hector, uh, it seems like you had something very important to say. Give us a call back. That was an accidental drop. Hector called 713-526-5738. Again, that number is 713-526-5738. Yes, uh, Howard. Um, I mean, the guy has been a con man his entire life. And not only a basic con man, but there are, there, there are, there's uh, credible information out there uh, of the type of folks that he actually hung with. Which weren't the, which weren't the the most illegal type of folks, if you know what I mean. Jeffrey Epstein. Thank you, and 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 rumor has it some folks in the mob as well. So I mean, you know what we're talking about. We have to. Uh, the, the thing about it is this: the rest of the world is looking at us, and we have to make sure and get things right. We have to make sure and get things right. I'd go ahead and just pass on Johnny and, and take the other call, please, uh, brother. Johnny, come on in. Hey, uh, do you think that if I take another mini vacation that we might get some more good news politically? Maybe he can actually be in, arrested with handcuffs and well, the criminal take another vacation? Maybe, because if you took a vacation and that's what happened, I'm going to tell you you need to go take another vacation, Johnny. I think All right. I will. You need I'll to take another back. vacation. But look, let me tell you guys, it's important. I, I talk to folks about uh, what's happening in the country, and I speak to f foreigners as well, right? And unfortunately, what's happening right now is it's not only that we are the law laughing stock, right? Because laughing stock is one thing if they still believe in your structure inherently. The problem right now is that we're not only a laughing stock, but people have lost faith that we, the people of the, Amer of, of the United States, can actually get things right. That is scary. Especially from, a, you know, we worry about certain countries that have the atomic bomb and the big military. We worry about them because, of the, it, because they are unstable. Well, yesterday, one of the credit agencies degraded our, our, our credit rating, not be only because of our debt, but because of something you never heard of before. We have become unstable as a country. But Johnny, um, let me tell you, don't go on vacation. I'm going to do this. I'm going to jump to Joe and ask you to, uh, uh, to hold. So let's jump to Joe and get Joe on the line. Joe, come on in. Hey, Egberto, how's it going today? I am doing fine, sir. Talk to me. Man, you you uh, you invited me to call. Um, you know, I'm wearing a I'm wearing a hat right now that says uh, Ultra MAGA. It's red, and and I'm about to be on the Kingwood parking ride. So if you see me, come on up and say hi. Well, you know what? I if you are a MAGA, I would love to sit down and have a cup of coffee with you. Yeah, you know, I, I, I got to work. I work 40 hours a week. But um, outside of that, you know, there's coffee shops right here at uh, Westlake Houston Parkway and Kingwood Drive. I will sit down with you anytime and talk. Uh, I love that. I mean, I'm, I, 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 mean I, I, I feel like I feel like my values, I share my values with all other reasonable people. You know, my my kids, uh, my kids are Boy Scouts. My girl does dance and gymnastics. I'm an average American who has seen in my lifetime Washington, D.C. grow from a small, you know, uh, well, actually, <laughs> before my lifetime, but D.C. was supposed to be a small, you know, uh, um, government that, that managed treaties and interstate commerce. But, you know, somewhere around the 1920s, the Supreme Court deemed that, okay, many things are interstate commerce now, and we're going we're gonna to get involved in many things. And the um, the federal government started to grow and grow and grow and grow, and at some point they could no longer pay their bills, and they started putting it on the credit card. And they're huge now, and they, they're a, they're an entity now that that I think they're um, they're not yet fighting for their survival, but they sense danger. Okay. You know, it's like if any any if, if if I work for a if I work for big oil, and um, <clears throat> you know people are talking bad about big oil and they're coming after big oil, I feel like I'm under attack. Right. 
you're a government employee in DC, you're the same way. You know, you've got a you you've got a team. You want your you want you want to retire from the federal government. You want your children to work there. It's just another big corporation, just like all the other big corporations. It's, except it's it's the it's the head corporation, right? Oh. It, 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 and so you know it, it's uh, and the reason the reason why I'm voting for Donald Trump not because he's my favorite game show host. Right. No, I, nobody really likes Donald Trump. You know, he's a he's a brash Yankee from New York. He's not my favorite guy, but he's not a 40 year career politician who has built up the, the slickest scamming organization the world has ever seen. He is a disruptor of that organization, or at least at least he says he is. And I think the last time he was in, he tried to disrupt that organization, but they mobilized they mobilized against him and and he dug in and there was nothing he could do he was paralyzed from day one so okay joe to- joe I, I get your drift and guess what i love that you came in here and gave a rational reason why you support donald trump i'm saying that from the depths of my heart everything that you just said actually sounds plausible no doubt the reason why we will have a cup of coffee together, and maybe we'll need about five cups of coffee, the reason why we'll have a cup of coffee is based on the premise that you are judging things on. Guess what I'm going to tell you? I see your point. But guess what I have to tell you? The premise on, on you know, if, if you build something on a false premise, right, it goes on building from there. And everything that you said, except from the base, was plausible. I'm not, I'm, 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 and I'm telling all my lib friends right now, my progressive friends, I want you to listen to what Joe just said. All right? I want you to listen to what Joe just said. Because Joe had a complete thread of plausibility built on a base that we're going to drink five cups of coffee and fix. Hey, Joe, I mean this. You said you're here in Kingwood? We gonna meet. You hear me? I hear you, man. I'm ready. <laughs> all right, good. We are gonna meet, but I'm not gonna. I don't have the time to go into all the implausibility part of the base that, that I just mentioned. But you're gonna talk about that, and when we do, do this tape, you're gonna come on as a guest with me because we're gonna have some good conversation. We'll talk later, brother. Thank you for calling. You're welcome. We'll see you. All right. Peace. All right. Let's jump to Mac. Hello. Come on in, Mac. Hey, man. Good morning. How are you? I am fine. Talk to me. Well, I guess uh, I don't want to sidetrack the show and all that, but well, first of all, I wanted to say thanks for at least trying to focus on the optimism part. I think a lot of people get caught up with, I, I think it's the way the, the news algorithms and what they plan, but everybody thinks on the negative, like nothing will ever get better. So first first of all, thank you for that. Uh, your pro, Your positive approach starting off this morning. The second thing and the thing I wanted to talk about and I, I hope I don't sidetrack is brother. This is your show. Please go ahead and say what you must. <laughs> what, what, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't want to denigrate anybody's religion or their approach or anything, but so there's an actual, like, I don't know if you call it a conspiracy or, or, or it kind of is a conspiracy among evangelicals. Part of the reason they want Trump is because they know he's terrible and they know he's going to break the system. And they want to destroy everything so that they can bring the apocalypse about sooner. Now, you know, like I said, I don't want to attack anybody's belief system, but the main flaw in that that I see is why do humans think that they can bring about the apocalypse? I mean, God moves on his own time for people who believe in that, right? So is there anything to say about that? And yeah, I'll let me give you a comment about that because it's, it's actually, uh, believe it or not, a lot simpler. The apocalypse is the story that's already there in the Bible, and 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 the the it's it's used as a smokescreen. Okay, uh, it's used as a smokescreen to empower a few. You just you just I mean you just set it out the way it is, right? It turns out that they know Donald Trump is a bad person. They know he it, there's nothing biblical about him. In fact. In biblical days, he would probably have been stoned, uh, put to death. But they know, they know that th- there there are certain characters in the Bible they can kind of equate this guy with. But ultimately speaking, uh, Mac, it's about 
power. They found these evangelical leaders found themselves in a position where they could control the president or uh, where they're, I, I don't want to say control. There could be a symbiotic evil relationship where they are empowered by being next to the presidency. And that's what they got with Trump because Trump needs them and they love having Trump because it gives them the power base. They got three Supreme Court justices that's going to give them all that they need. And it's, it's, a, it's sort of a cynical relationship between evangelicals and plutocrats. And who benefits the most? The plutocrats, second by the evangelical pastors. I mean, look, um, it doesn't take rocket science to understand this, but you know the difference between church and secular is the following, right? If you look at, let's say, a whole bunch of secular Democrats, everybody have their own opinion and nobody is going to allow somebody to tell them stuff that they don't want to believe. Now, uh, I always talk about why people love, why America loves dictators. America loves dictators because if there's a dictator in, 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 in uh, the Philippines, if there's a dictator in IT, if there's a dictator in the Dominican Republic or wherever, when America wants its policies implemented in those parts of the world, it goes to one person. It doesn't have to infiltrate yeah. the population or anything. The same happens with church. People intrinsically follow the pastor. Okay? So if you follow the pastor, uh, by having control of the pastor, you have control of the vote of his pew, which is exactly why what the Republicans have successfully done. They control the evangelical pastors. The evangelical pastors control their pew. And in that way, there is a solid mass that they can control. And these people can bend themselves into pretzels to make something that they said six years ago was evil is somehow okay now. And then they think the rest of the world is going to have some sort of credibility for their position. So that's my point. It's about power, Mac. Anything else, Mac? We Mac, are you still? Th okay, let's go to tag then. Okay, I think tag is going to be coming in pretty soon. Uh, uh, we may have a little little nick on the phone for for a little minute, but uh, not to worry. I think uh, we'll open that up in a little bit. Oops, there we go, and I think we can get tag in in a little bit. All right, uh, and, yes. come on in, tag. Come on in, tag. No. How are you today? I am fine. Talk to me, my brother. Well, I was thinking about our ability to exercise the franchise. Yes. You're familiar with that term, right? Of, of course. That's, that's our power to vote, our, our power to pick good leaders. And, and when somebody picks a leader, like let's say if Charles Manson ran and you exercised your power of the franchise to vote for um, – Manson, it'd be a joke, and and I think that people need to take their uh, uh, exercising a franchise a little more seriously, and and just because somebody hasn't been convicted of a crime, they can still be a criminal, even if they are never convicted or never go to jail, they they're still following criminal ways. Oh wow, Jack, stop for one second. I want that everybody to understand something uh, that something that uh, Tag just said. Uh, we tend to look at people who have felonies and commit crimes as the rejects in society. We, we look down at them, etc., etc. When for every person in jail, there are likely dozens who have done the same thing, who never got caught, who has enough upstanding with community. Uh, so we should have a bit of humbleness. Continue to attack, but that's an important concept you just laid out there. Well, in order to really uh, exercise our, our franchise, our right to vote, we, we need to be picking out people who are upstanding and, and uh, like voting for Nixon, for example. That'd be, that'd be a terrible waste of the franchise. You know, we need to take our, that uh, a lot more seriously yes. in, in voting for people. And, and, you know, voting for a criminal, whether he's actually been busted or not, is, is, a, is for me, is a huge issue. I, I just want to vote for people who are honest. I'm I'm sorry, some of the honest people, like Jimmy Carter, for example, don't get a lot of respect. But the fact is, is that I'd much rather have Jimmy Carter as a president than you know who. 
<laughs> well, you know what is so interesting, Tag, is for the longest time I've been talking about uh, the, the most honest, most reliable, most uh, moral president America has ever had was, in fact, Jimmy Carter. And I tell you what, if, if, you, if living a long life says anything, his life story you know, I, I've always been a member of his, um, he has this project for building homes. I can't remember what it's called right now. Uh, I joined that movement when he started it, uh, building homes for the indigent and for the people who needed homes. And even last year, he was still hammering nails, building homes. I was always a supporter and I've always encouraged people to support. Gosh, I can't remember the name of the, uh, the, the, um, yeah, but- that, Habitat for Humanity. Habitat for Humanity. I've always been a supporter of Habitat for Humanity. This is a moral man, not only when he was the president, but also in the way he lived his life. And it would be nice if we had more presidents like that. It was the only... Thank you, Alistair Waters, for reminding me as well, Habitat for Humanity. It was it was the only president we had that never uh, put us into war as well. Think about it. And we did pretty darn good. Anyway, um, uh, anything else, Tag, before I jump to Johnny? Johnny's been holding for quite a while. Yeah, and I'm sure Johnny will agree with us that uh, Carter kind of went the other way. He wasn't a a, a real flashy guy. He didn't get a lot of attention, but he did a lot of good things. Nobody respected him because because he wasn't that, um, what do I want to say, that flashy or, you know, he he wasn't charismatic, you know, like like Reagan was charismatic. And and so we just can't we just can't uh, put somebody who's so charismatic up up on a pedestal, and especially if they're charismatic and they're criminals, even if they haven't been indicted or thrown in jail, they they still don't need to be on that pedestal where we exercise our franchise. So that's what I wanted to say. Thanks, Egberto. Have a good day. Thank you very much, Tag. All right, let's jump and go to Johnny. Come on in, Johnny. Jimmy Carter, not only did he not get us into any wars, he actually was negotiating with the uh, so-called students in Iran. But guess who? But guess what? Ronald Reagan and his crew, they committed treason and undermined that deal, causing those Americans to stay in, in capture uh, longer than they needed to. And where was the news media? Exactly right. He made sure that those guys didn't get on the plane until he was elected president. And he could walk and chew gum at the same time. In other words, while he was being a diplomat, he also had the White uh, the White House roof outfitted with solar panels, and he w- and he was working out a nationwide uh, sustainable green energy program, which yes. was canceled by Ronald Reagan immediately, just as soon as Ronald Reagan fired a bunch of Pat co workers on strike for higher wages and better working conditions. You know your history, but, sir. But this calls for Joe. Uh, I would urge you to connect to Joe, turn Joe on to the writings of John Perkins, ex-CIA man, the so-called self-described economic hitman for the CIA. Because oh, yeah, I, I, actually, I interviewed, I, was it, I interviewed this guy who was the hitman, he wrote the book, I interviewed him, I, check out my website. Uh, it, uh, check it out, um, I, I interviewed him, Perkins is his name, Perkins. Check him out. Right. So for Joe, uh, in the 1920s, what we saw was a four or five decades uh, long accumulation of events, starting with the the creation of what we now know as the modern industrial era. And what happened by the 1910s and 1920s was overconsumption by the ultra-wealthy. Exactly. Hey, Johnny, Johnny, because you are such a regular caller... I'm going to keep you on the line, but I we have a caller that I don't think I've seen before. Al, I want to keep you hot at the same time I bring Al in. So come on in, Al. Hi, thanks for having me. Talk to me, my brother. Hear me? Uh, I, I was just going to make a comment. On You're breaking up, sir. Of the Trump... Um, deal. You know, an apocalypse is a Greek word that means the lifting of the veil or the revealing of the truth. And you could make a case that Donald Trump is the rider of the white, the rider on the white horse of the apocalypse. 
and he's the embodiment of the seven deadly sins. Um, it's apparent in his um, actions, greed, lust, rage, all those things. And, uh, you know, you could make a case that he is, he, his, his role is predestined. Um, another word for him would be the false prophet. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm not a big religious person, but it's all there in the Bible. And, you know, you know these have to come, have to mm -hmm. pass for us to, to go into the new beginning. So it's just part of the process. You don't have to align yourself with that and be deceived because, I mean, he is the great deceiver. He makes all these promises that are never fulfilled. And really the whole time he's uh, satisfying his um, greed and lust and all the deadly sins. Um, you know, as far as the, the rider of the white horse of the apocalypse, uh, the rider on the white horse carries the bow and wears the crown. The Stephanos, the now, winner of race. Uh, let me let me butt in a second here because uh, first of all, um, I think you know, looking at the Bible as a history book, I think what in my in, in my this is my opinion, uh, sort of banging off of yours, is that I I, I think yes, he is the he's a that person that has all the deadly sins, uh, whatever that that is. Uh, but I I like to look at it as we always have had throughout history psychopaths and psychopaths have always had the uncanny ability to have a following almost like the pied piper right and so i mean I, I, while while you tied into the, to the biblical i would say that the biblical has simply tied into what history has always been and it is about in t it's about, in my opinion, it's about making sure that humanity gets sufficiently enlightened that these psychopaths that come by periodically don't get the, uh, doesn't get the, the, the pull through that a Donald Trump has gotten. But if you listen to what Joe has to say, Joe was the caller who said he's a super MAGA. There's a whole lot of in what Joe has to say, that many of us, I don't know whether you're progressive conservatives or otherwise, but many of us progressives and a little bit neoliberal, well, it's not the progressives really, that many neoliberal has, have allowed a Trump to exist. And in fact, that is some of the things that I'm going to talk to Joe about. Because to some extent... I, I don't know if you heard my interview with the, well, actually it was supposed to play today. Not, I didn't play that one. I played it on my three o'clock show about me talking to a, the, the guy who's running in Missouri for attorney general. And I was asking him, are you engaging the rural folks? Are you engaging these people that supposedly don't agree with us? And he's like, that's where my campaign is centralized right now. So we create this apocalypse that you're talking about, and I think the Bible is a good history lesson of why that has occurred, in my humble opinion. Uh, Al, anything else before I jump to Brian? Oh, it, it's, it's just that, uh, you know, uh, prophecy does have some legitimacy, legitimacy if you can connect the dots. Yes, I you agree know, with I'm that. I agree with that. This is just through my research that that's what it appears to me. But Al, let me just give one corollary to that. And that is, the, the, what I want to add to that is that you're right if you connect the dots. My thing is, what's the genesis of the first dot? But let me let you go, Al, because I want to get Brian in and we're running close on time. I really do appreciate you calling and being a part of this program. Come on in, Brian. How are you doing today, my friend? Can Brian, you you're me? on. Yes, sir. Yeah, can you, yeah, can you, you can hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, I'd like to talk about Social Security for just a few moments. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Uh, now, if say I'm going to throw some numbers out here. They don't have to be accurate. They don't have to be 
uh, precise. Sure. Say you uh, start working when you're 16 and eventually you make your way up and you get a better paying job and whatever, and you're going to retire 40 years later. Let's say you've made Mm $500,000. Your employer has to have paid $500,000 also Mm -hmm. for your retirement because you put in 6.25%. Your employer puts in Mm 6.25%. So as an adult male, your average lifespan after retirement is seven years, 12.5 years for a female. Mm-hmm. So let's say you have $500,000. You die, you, the government pays you back $200,000. What happens to that other 300000 The government keeps it. You're yes. not allowed to your aunt or your uncle or your nieces or nephews. You're correct. Government yes, you're correct. Is this a fair program? Yes. Would Is you like to hear program? the reasoning behind it? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, the first mistake is to consider Social Security as a savings program. Let's 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 be clear here. When you buy a home and you insure that home, you are paying three four hundred dollars a month for your insurance. When you buy your car and you insure your car, you may be paying two hundred dollars a month. When you buy your life insurance, a, a term life, you may be paying eighty dollars a month or whatever. If you add up all the amount of monies that you paid in insurance, not the Social Security, but in regular insurance, you are guaranteed if you don't have a car crash, a burnt down home, or any one of these to have given hundreds of thousands thousands of dollars in in, private insurance where executives have been paid tons of money. As I I explained to other people, uh, Social Security is not a savings program. It's an insurance program. I I don't give the government credit for the way they advertise it when Gore spoke about lockboxes and all that crap. Let's tell the American people the truth. Social Security is nothing but Social Security an insurance policy for Americans. If you happen to live 50 years after you've retired, you are still guaranteed a salary with the cost of living adjustments. So you are, while I'm not going to argue with you about whether it is fair, because you know what? I am, it's, it, it, you are correct in your calculations. Where you are incorrect, in my humble opinion, is that it is not a savings program. It's an insurance program. Now, you can complain about how much the insurance program is costing. And I would tell you, we could reduce the price of that insurance program by a bunch if everybody's salaries, capital gains, and everything else were taxed at all rates, meaning from the time, not, in other words, not stop at somewhere around $200,000, but stop at the billions, which is where most of our capital is. We could probably have a social security rate of probably three or 4% total. I mean, both the, the total value of, th- uh, of 3%. So what I'm telling you, my brother, I get it. You are correct. Where you are wrong is to consider this an investment program. It's not. It's an insurance program, sir. Go ahead. Income, not social security uh, uh, interest. Excuse me, insurance. It's social security income. Right, but it's an insurance policy. Just like you can buy, and you can the same way you are given money to an insur to, to to social security, sir. You can buy an insurance policy that does the same. It's not insurance. It's income. No, 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 <laughs> sir. You're you're again, again, sir. Social Security is not, and when you you cannot go into anywhere on the government website and see how much you have accumulated in cash value on in, in present value of your in your your Social Security. It's not an investment. It is a an insurance policy. It is an investment. Do you pay for it? Yes or no. Do you pay for your, yes, you pay for it just like you pay for your car insurance. Can, when you don't have a car crash, can you go to the insurance company and say, I want to get the money back because I didn't have a claim? When you have life insurance, when you die, where do you, do you get that money back? Or they say, no, no, thanks. Actually, if you get term life, you don't get the money back if you live past your term. Okay, that's just how it works, sir. Look, look, uh, Brian. There is no point here in 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 arguing about whether it's an investment or not, because it's a fact that it's not. The mere fact that you don't get this money back means it's not an investment, and nobody told you it was an investment. 
I want anybody listening to go to a, a, a planner and find out if it's an investment or it's an insurance. The, it doesn't matter what the planner said. I'm telling you how it it operates, sir. It operates as an insurance. You take a look at what it does. It operates as an insurance. I don't care if a planner says it's an investment. He would be wrong. If you if the current operating mode of Social Security is its current operating mode, and it operates as an insurance, nothing more, nothing less. So you can harp, my dear brother, about it's an investment. Saying that doesn't make it so. That's all I'm saying, Brian. It doesn't make it so saying it. Johnny, close me out real quickly. You got 30 seconds. Yeah, to Brian. Brian, you just answered your own question. You just alluded to life insurance policy. When someone dies and it pays out, that's income, but it comes from an insurance policy. But quickly to your call, your caller from uh, Kingwood, Joe. Joe needs to understand that the government was not large in the 1920s. It was at near zero, and there was no regulation. That's why we had these uh, uh, these corporate industrial oligarchs back then ripping people off, and we had massive protests and people getting killed protesting for decent treatment. Right now, okay, uh, Johnny. Thank you. You've been on the entire show. You always have the smart information. Now I need to throw it over to Brother Howard and Brother Jack for a closing statement because we got to get out of here. Very interesting show today. And thank you, Johnny, for calling in. We wondered where you were. Next time you take a vacation, we're going to expect more indictments on the former president. Now for Jack. Yeah, this is uh, Trump plays to the victim in people. He makes them feel they've been cheated. Then he focuses his constituents on the prejudices and hates of the peeps and the institutions that have wronged his followers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Jack. Folks, I want to first thank all of my callers, whether you agree with me or not. Specifically, Brian, I love that you're calling in often because I love your perspective. Joe, thank you for calling in as well. Al, Johnny, uh, uh, Hector, I'm sorry we dropped you. It seems like you had something important to say, but I will pick you up at some other time. We are here every day in the mornings at 6 a.m. right before we go to democracy now. My name is Egberto Willis. This is Politics and Right. Stay tuned for democracy now. My name is Egberto Willis. This is Politics and Right. No, I am this baby. I am what? Out. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.